Hi there, Polyphonic. This is Jade Simmons coming back at you. This week, I wanted to talk to you about the idea of putting on your own darn concert. Probably one of the most uh, discouraging aspects of career building, especially for musicians and I hear for visual artists as well, is that we get so frustrated by sending out our promotional materials, sending out our press kits, sending out our demo uh, tracks and then waiting by the phone for some presenter to call us back and put on a concert in our behalf. But the truth is, remember, if we're here encouraging you to be the boss of your own art, the truth is that you can put your own concert on. So what I want to encourage you to do is put on the hat of producer and presenter. Now remember, what my big thing is, is getting you not to wait around to be discovered, but to discover yourself instead. And in this case I'm asking you not to wait around to be presented but present yourself instead. Now of course that is easier said than, said than done but it's not impossibly hard. It's something that you can do and if you learn to do it well the payoff can be quite huge. Um, when you're putting on this presenter hat you're going to be looking for a place to put on your concert. You're going to find a venue. You're going to be handling the events planning, the promotion and the actual production of that final concert. So it is lots of work, but like I said earlier, it can mean a big payoff. The hardest aspect, or at least the aspect that frightens us the most, as well as professional presenters, is the idea of having to fill seats. So you're gonna need to know where your base lives. For instance, for me, um, I'm gonna have the most success in presenting my own concerts in my current place of residence, which is Houston, Texas, my hometown of Charleston. Some of you might have seen the ads for a homecoming concert that I'm giving. I haven't played in my hometown, at least on a very official level, in probably over a decade. So we're expecting a really great turnout for that. Other places that are great for me are Chicago, New York, Detroit, and DC. And when I say they're great for me, that means that those are places that have proven to have good, good turnouts for me. Usually the media covers me whenever I'm in those cities. So you want to look at a track record, um, look at your own track record for when it comes to where can you present your own concerts. And then you want to look at cutting a deal with the venue. Don't think, oh Jade, I can't afford to rent Carnegie Hall, I need a patron. Well, I'm not telling you to rent out Carnegie Hall. I'm telling you to be creative, find alternative spaces, art galleries, um, nightclubs, and don't just rent them out. Most of them will offer a rental fee, but don't rent them out. Consider making a deal um, with the person who has the venue. Instead of paying a rental fee, offer splitting the door the ticket price at the door. This is what most nightclubs do with artists. Sometimes it's as awesome as a 70-30 split in favor of the artist. So don't look for a traditional concert hall. Look for a place where you can create an experience that's uniquely yours. And then the next most important aspect after you get the nuts and bolts in place of finding the venue and figuring out what you're going to rent and what kind of audio equipment you're going to bring in, you want to get busy in the area of media relations. Now, I say there's nothing like free media. So instead of spending hundreds of dollars on ad space, work on writing an amazing press release about this amazing concert experience you're going to offer and try to get the media to write feature stories about you. Don't just get in the main uh, big time publication, but look at the smaller publications that go out on a more regular basis. If there's a weekly publication, they're more likely to feature you possibly on the cover um, than one of the big papers who are probably um, getting their stories a lot further in advance. You want to look at ways to tell your story and you want to make it compelling so that you have reporters who are writing about the experience that you're going to offer. Um, the other thing you need to be in control of is how this event is talked about. So if you're teaming up with an art gallery, you want to give them copies of the press materials that you're using, your press release, so that you can all be talking about the experience in the same way. And you do want to main control, maintain control of how the event is presented. So yes, it is a partnership, but you are the artist that's being presented, so you want to make sure that the image and the verbiage that's going out is approved by you. Um, you want, of course, these materials to appear on the website of the venue that's hosting you, and you want to make sure that what they have on the website is consistent with what you're going to have on your website as well. 
And don't be worried about logistics like selling tickets. If the venue itself isn't set up to selling tickets, uh, set up for selling tickets, there are tons of websites online that offer you ways to sell tickets and you can maintain control of that aspect as well. Um, the biggest piece of advice I can give you is to start small. Don't rent or uh, cut a deal with a place that has a thousand seats. Maybe start with 50 to 100 and offer a unique salon experience or a unique up close exhibit if you're a visual artist. And start relatively modest in pricing. Don't sell your tickets for $50. Maybe start in the area of 10, 15, 20, 25 dollars depending on what your base is in that area and test the market. This is something I'm just starting to do. I'm going to take you with me uh, when I go to Charleston and produce my own concert there. And if this is a model that works for me, it's something I'm going to start to do more of because I don't want to wait around for presenters to decide it's time uh, to put on a Jade Simmons concert. I'm going to put them on myself uh, in the meantime. I have a feeling that once I start doing that, I'm not going to want to go back to the old way of doing things. You can do the math. Let's say that you're doing a space that has three to 400 seats eventually, and you're selling those tickets at 20 to $25 with a 70-30 split. Uh, once you take out what you've spent in expenses, you can make usually a lot more than you would make if a presenter were paying you a standard artist fee. So see if it's feasible for you, if it makes sense for you, and strongly consider becoming your own producer and presenter. Good luck with that. Bye.